Yeah, 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 man. You already know what the fuck it is, man. DJ Jerry, a.k.a. the boss with the most sauce. You hear me? This that motherfucking mixtape Travis ready on right now, man. I got the advocate, Tori Lowe in the building, man. Tori, what's happening? How you doing, brother? Good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. Hey, but for the people that don't know who you is, man, let them know who you are and what you do. Well, right now, you know, we... I just opened up my first uh, civil rights, human rights group. Yeah. I'm partnered with uh, several lawyers in the city, and uh, we just want to bring civil rights and human rights to enough, to the next level, to the digital era. Yeah. And, uh, you know, put a, put our own twist on it because Wisconsin is one of the most segregated states, and uh, Milwaukee is considered one of the worst black uh, places for black people to live statistically. So yeah. um, that's what I'm on right now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but uh, what uh, part of the city you grew up on? Uh, 2351 North Fifth Street. Uh, North Fifth Street? Yeah, North, North Fifth Street, North Side. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's, uh, I was born and raised, and then I, I went to school at North Division. I went to a school at Lee Street Elementary in North Division. Yeah. And then I went to middle school at Webster for okay. two years. Then I then I came over to North Division. But uh, I ended up going to college, you know, okay. on a football scholarship. You know yeah. what I mean? So that, that got me off the block. Like, if I wouldn't have never play football, I don't think I would have got off the block right. to see different things. You know, if you stay in Milwaukee, they don't teach you they don't teach you certain things when you grow up and, and never leave the city, you know. Yeah. So I, I'm happy that I was able to grow up on Fifth Street, born and raised, mm -hmm. and then go off to Iowa, play a little ball. Right. Then uh, I spent some time down in Madison. I was trying to play for the Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah. And then I ended up having my first son and started working at uh, CBS News. Yeah. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah but shit, like, like growing up, like when you was going to North Division and all that, how was it like? What was the environment like? Over Man, there? North Division was wild. <laughs> you know, it, it was a, it was a high. Uh, uh, you know, it was when we would listen to the announcements, it would be a lot of people dying. Yeah, and our, on our announcements, like right. we'd come to school and be like, "Man, dude, dead!" Like, you know, we it was a lot of trauma going on. It was a lot of high teenage pregnancy. You know, um, you know. Graduation rate wasn't high. We had a class of about 300, and I think they said 398. Only 55 of us made it to senior year. Yeah. So it was one of those things where, you know, if I hadn't played football and went to church, I had became a deacon at uh, 15 years old. Like, yeah. So I think that those the combination of that two kept me out, you know, because I was in big trouble. Like, before I hit North Division, before I came in my freshman year, I had dropped out of middle school. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't even – I was one of them kids that I was out here the gang banging. So I was out here gang banging like at like eleven, twelve. Damn. You know, yeah. I was. I, and then God chose me to you know do something else because it was nothing else that presented itself. My family was hustlers. My right. granddaddy was 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 a hustler, and, mm -hmm. and my I, I was raised by my granddaddy and my grandmama. Mm -hmm. She was the mother of the church, and he was out here. Uh, I can't. I ain't gonna say a lot right, of stuff, right, but right, he right. was out here doing some all kinds of stuff. Right, like, right. so I got to see Jesus and like the devil, like yeah, almost at the same time, time yeah, you know. So it, it didn't present nothing. Really presented itself as an opportunity to really, you know, other than you know hustling. First business they show you when you come up is drug dealing, like for a black man. Yeah. And then the first business a female get is to sell some pussy. Yeah, like, like if you in the poverty neighborhood, like, you know, mm -hmm. so they call it hustling. But that's those. It's only two games you're going to get offered, you know yeah. what I mean, in the hood. You know like what I'm That's you, fast money. That's going to make some money, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But shit, like, um, you used to rap, right? Man, I still rap. Are you still rap? Man, I still rap because, um, but I don't, I don't rap like I used to. Yeah. Like, 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 I developed too. Like, I started seeing that Milwaukee, when I came home, I was in a rock band for like six years making big money, like yeah. called UHC. And, UHC. and if you Google UHC, you'll see that we was out in Iowa. Mm -hmm. It was a rock band out of Iowa named UHC. I managed that band, and um, that it showed me something because when I got in that rock band, I noticed you ain't need no record deal. Yeah. Like, the world was made, you know, European culture was made for rock and roll. Like, you can go to any club with a band and make money. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't like how we was coming up where you had to get with a click. You had to, you know, find a cash money or, or a yeah. master P oh, yeah. to get some money. No, they you put a band together and your first check, you if y'all call, you could see 3000 like 4000 5000 like that. So we came out the garage making like three, 4000 like yeah. our first concert. So... Uh, when I came home in 2011, mm -hmm. I had just got out of an incident where I was at this job in Minnesota, um, and some white dudes tried to jump me at work. Yeah. And so I had went through like four years federal court and won 
Cause right. they they said they didn't do it. They was denying it. They was trying to tie me up and throw me in a hog grind grinder at work. I was working at this packing house. What the fuck? What, what happened? Uh we shit. I've knocked the piss out the motherfuckers. Like you know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah, but, right, right. but you know. I'm a football player, yeah, and yeah. I, amateur, I used to sweet. amateur it box. We came up on the block. I don't believe that. I mean, excuse my French, but I don't believe no white person could be no black person straight Hell up. No. And I believe if you don't bring like five or six of y'all, you know what I mean, you ain't fit. They tried. I don't. I mean, they tried. <laughs> you know, you know, they the police yeah. tried to get me because they was bleeding. Not. I, I mean, they yeah. tried to get me. You know, yeah. and I and they tried to make it seem like I did something to them, but they they put me in jail for two weeks. Today, today, you know, but you know, I was the only one of the only brothers right. out there. So they kind of, so anyway, make a long story short, we got to federal court mm. and, um, it was, you know, and, and, and it took like 30 minutes, all, yeah. all them years went by and only 30 minutes to resolve that. And I, that's when I knew that black people had to take everything to federal court. Like, mm -hmm. like if, if we on a city level or a local level, they can hide it, but we got to, we got to ex escalate it to a high level. Definitely. Because federal court don't play the same, bro, the same rules as, as you know, city, mm -hmm. state, you know, right. stuff like that. So, right. so right. that's why every I've been a part of every major uh, lawsuit that didn't hit this city since 2011. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. But like, from you going from the rock band and to the present day, like, what made you want to do what you're doing now, like helping families and stuff like that? That's because I survived an incident. I think I, if I wouldn't have went through that whole federal court experience, oh, yeah. I okay. wouldn't have never, I probably wouldn't be like this to this degree. Yeah. Okay. Like, you, people like me is made. Yeah. You, like, no, I mean, I can tell you, like, that motivation came from somewhere else. It, it, it's If you find somebody really helping black folks, ask them what happened. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have a story because yeah, kind of like black how, how Batman, you know yeah. how he, you know how he became bad. If you look at how you know Batman became Batman, Spider Man. If you look mm -hmm. at Marvel comics, yeah. it was always that one yeah, incident story, that changed yeah. their life. So, so yeah. uh, mine happened in Minnesota. I, I always tell people I was made in Minnesota. Like okay. I wouldn't have knew. Yeah, I got doing? schooled down there. Like I, 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 I won, but I lost too. I saw, I saw two things going on with our people. So I knew that our people needed real leverage. So when I came home, I started from nothing. I right. just I just kind of started cleaning up neighborhoods. Everybody be like, I want to I want to be like what you do. I said, No, nah, you don't. I said, Go mm -hmm. clean up sixty neighborhoods first. That's all I did. They don't want to get out here and pick up the paper. They they see the news. They see the they see everything else, but they don't see that it was a lot of hard work mm -hmm. that you have to do to really get the people to really uh, respect what you're trying to do for them. You for know real. what I mean. So I cleaned up all them neighborhoods, man. Picked up all that trash. For like two summers, you know, cleaning mm -hmm. people's neighborhoods, you know. Milwaukee looked like a trash can when I came home. Like it was so yeah. dirty. Now too. Shit. Well, you know, we trying. We yeah. trying. It's more people trying to do cleanups. Yeah. But yeah. um I think I think a cleaner community is a better community. Mm -hmm. So I you know, if you go to the suburbs, right? Mm -hmm. You it's clean. Yeah. You know, I know cats will throw a whole Wendy's garbage bag down on their neighborhood, but if they travel outside to like Sherwood, they, they ain't gonna throw nothing down because the because the clean mentality is in the energy is there. So I felt like we could do it on the north side. Because that's where they're comfortable. Like they're not right. comfortable in the suburbs. So they be like, oh shit, bro, come on, bro. It's the police out right. here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Throw shit out the window. They know I hear you talk. They don't get no fuck. So it, it's it's a slow grind on the north side, but like I said, you the music I had to put my music to the side mm. because Milwaukee didn't need no rapper. Like, like, right. like I made that conscious decision. Even though I got songs with Busy Bone, I got mm. songs with Three Six Mafia. Yeah, uh, I, I, Dre produced yeah. a few tracks. I had, a, I got a whole catalog that. Yeah. But then I put that aside because mm. I, I, I evaluated, like, dang, like they need my mental. Yep. They need more of my mental strength. Than me trying to get out here and trying to rap, you know, it was so many cats claiming to be the voice of rapping and all of that, but the the the, the hood actually itself was deteriorating. But coming from Minnesota, I could see that. Yeah. But if I'm living here, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna know nothing else. Yeah. But seeing how they communities was operating, and then I would come home back home in Milwaukee, I had to make that choice. You right. know what I mean? So I made that choice. Yeah, yeah. I, but yeah, I remember the first time I heard the name Tory Lowe, it was when somebody said, he said, bro, you heard this nigga uh, Tory Lowe walk from uh, Milwaukee to Chicago? <laughs> I was like, hell no. I said, who the fuck said it? <laughs> I was like, I ain't never heard it. I was like, who is dude? Then he was like, oh yeah, man, somebody that be helping the people. I was like, man. So so, so what was that? Like, like what made you do that? Um, well, a lot of people don't know that since 2013, I handled the bulk of the violence. 
mm. the bulk of the deaths in this city. Like since twenty since the end of twenty thirteen, I would say, mm. going into twenty fourteen. Mm. You know, from there to now, I handle the bulk uh, of the violence. When I say I handle the bulk of the violence, I made a conscious decision that you can't complain about the police doing stuff to us if we allow black people to do stuff to us. For real. So I go after, if a mother called me and say um, somebody killed her son, right. I'm going to go after whoever did it as hard as I go after anything else. I get the same and I, I take it with the same energy. Mm-hmm. So that being said, a lot of a lot of brothers went down for killing blacks. Yeah. And, and and that ain't really highly publicized. The journal just did a documentary on what I do in Milwaukee. That's gonna be coming out in the next week or two. Okay. They did it back in December, so they're gonna release it here pretty soon. But I don't really tell people how dirty it get. Like I I will I it, I'll go after my own. If if you take an innocent life, we gonna have a fucking problem. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I believe that we had to have we had to act. Mm-hmm. I seen a lot of people outside marching against the police, standing there for hours and years. Then a black person get killed. Nobody short to the vi- no nobody short. Nobody gave a fuck. Mm-hmm. But they screaming Black Lives Matter only when it pertains to when cops kill. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I flipped that. Mm-hmm. And and if you look back, all you see is that I'm dealing with both. Yeah. I do I do it equally. It's no it's no. This is case is bigger than this case. Right. You feel yeah, me? Sir. So we have to bring that balance to our people. And only how you're going to bring that balance is show them. Mm-hmm. You know, we visual. So I had to let them see it. Yeah. Now I see more people trying. Like, even though they ain't taking it to my degree, a lot of cats. I, and it's, it's funny because I'll be sitting in a room and the dude be like, we do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just I want to say something. You know, no, you don't. No, no. the fuck you don't. No. Like, like. I understand what you're saying, though. You 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 trying, you know. You're trying to do what but, I'm doing. But 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 like I said, I was I was made like this. Yeah. I, I take it to a different degree. I will walk in the motherfucker house and snatch his ass up, pedophiles, yeah. any nigga. Yeah. You fucking with little kids, I'ma fuck with you. Yeah, you gonna yeah. you going me and you gonna have a motherfucking problem. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 you is my brother, mm-hmm. but you can't harm innocent life. And we got to put that back into the community. Yeah. Like we got grandmamas and aunties walking around here. We got yeah. we got sisters and stuff for walking around here, and they got to live in this environment. Mm-hmm. So if we let that shit slide and we only complaining about, you know, what the police doing, then yeah, we ain't right. shit. We ain't right. You know. So so I I put everybody on gates. Yeah. But I don't fuck with the police either. No. So I mean, I, all right, this people be like, okay, well, you got to in order to get at niggas, you got to deal with the police. No, you don't. Every family. Got a detective assigned to them. Like, like I don't have to. I don't have to talk to the detective. The mo- whoever, if, if somebody get killed, the mother gonna get a detective assigned to her. Mm-hmm. We gonna do all the work and give her the, the stuff to get to them. Mm-hmm. I don't ever have to see them. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, but shit, like all that. I know you've been through a lot of involved in a lot of cases, a lot of big cases in the city. But like, which one kind of hit home for you? Like, damn, man, I gotta make sure this shit happened. Like. <sighs> There's so many of them. Yeah, the legal, it's, it's three of them, three major ones, because okay. they all was different. They mm. all had a different twist. Mm. The legal strip searching, when they, when, uh, when all that, while all the police was busting down niggas in the middle of the street yeah. front of their family, yeah. going in their underwear, digging in their booty holes yeah, and all that, yeah. fag nini and all that. You <laughs> feel me? We, he, you know, he's supposed to be getting out. Oh, he out right now. But at the end of the day, when all that went down, motherfuckers was talking about Trayvon Martin. Like, okay, Milwaukee is, is a crazy ass city. Yeah. Because we love out of, like for when Nipsey Hustle died, like niggas threw a big ass thing for Nipsey. I, I ain't got nothing against it. Right. But but don't don't do it for a lot of people. Try to try to balance that out with the people that's at the crib too. You feel me? We we love outside stuff, but then um they they don't even appreciate me. You know, not right. like I, not like that, but they don't support me at all. But Colin Kaepernick, all this outside stuff happened outside. They love to they love to uh, use that as a way to, to get credibility to their mission. Exactly. But it's it's a lot of people out here in the city that's being neglected. But you you got these feelings for people that that's not here, and it ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, do it for everybody. You know what I mean? You want to tell you the guy down the truth how these niggas think? This mm-hmm. how they think. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I if I post a Tory Low, I ain't gonna get that many likes. But if I post Nipsey Hussle or Colin Kaepernick, I'm gonna get plenty of likes, and right. that's gonna make me feel good. Right. See, I, I'm gonna tell <laughs> you this, but think. but I got a huge following, so that that, that really not true. I, I, no, well, I'm saying that's how they think. That's how they think. I like think Nipsey. I think crabs in a bucket. Exactly. I think yeah. I think they nobody really thought that a person from Milwaukee could really handle it, 
handle us. Mm. You know, everybody saying that you got to be a drug dealer or a rapper. That they thought the Messiah or the person that was going to change things was going to come through rapping, mm. or they thought that person was going to come through politics. Or they, I came straight up through the street. Yeah. I don't fuck with no politicians. Mm. I don't fuck with no police. I don't fuck with none of them niggas. Mm. And they don't understand it. Like, how did you do that without... Dealing with us, yeah. coming up through our cliques. Right. Fuck your clique. Like, like, like. <laughs> right. If it, it ain't, if it, all right. If we living in the worst place for black people to live, and y'all been here, why would the fuck I would come to you for the answer? Yeah, why would? Shit, yeah. All right, all right. So you been here? So you saying the dumb shit? All right, check this out. You been out here ten years. Mm. All of a sudden, here I come, and now you got the answer. Nah. They're trying to rain on the motherfucking parade. You you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all they so, so 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 I'm I I, I don't say nothing. Yeah. But I look I look at motherfuckers what come out their fucking mouth. Yeah. And they up there talking to me like, yeah, you know, you know, saying bullshit. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I and I stare at them. I don't say nothing. Right. I it ain't for me to. I don't practice fighting my own people. Right. I don't practice that. Yeah. I, that's a lot of energy I could be using to resolve an issue. Right. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, the disrespect level of motherfuckers, they, you know, dick riding ass, you know, people here, they, they they don't understand that they condition a certain way. This mm-hmm. this the slave, man. This the slave plantation right here in Milwaukee. For real. That's true. If you look at all the statistics that's that's negative about black communities, mm-hmm. and y'all been out here saying y'all been in leadership for like what, 10, 11 years? Right. And so you the problem. <laughs> exactly. I'm not no community leader. Don't put that shit on me. Mm-hmm. I, 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 when people say I'm a community leader, I say no, I'm not. If if I was leading the community, we'd be going a different way. I don't lead this community. Right. I'm only by request. I'm, they only request me. I don't go nowhere unless somebody call me. It ain't nowhere I went or no case I ever dealt with that nobody didn't call me. You got to call me to show up. Okay, so it seemed like I'm showing up to a lot of stuff. Okay, well, that's because a lot of people calling me, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I don't chase down situations where I see it on the news. I don't even watch the news. Damn. I never sung one press release to the news. Never. I never, they never, I never sung them nothing to say nothing. That I posted it on my Facebook. Right. Like, you know, for, for the people. Right. I, I'm trying to get our people to, my message is let's do it. We can do it. Mm-hmm. Me and you could go out here and do it. Yeah, yeah. I believe that if me and you walk out this door right now, whatever we talked about, it can happen. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't believe that we need to to go and, and, and make networks. We can do it. Now, Now, if the people don't want to have it there, it ain't going to be there. Right. But yeah. if we want it there, it ain't nothing we can't put nowhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's my mentality. For real. Yeah, yeah, but shit, like when uh, when you when you walked in here, man, we was just talking about people losing like their life to the uh, car crashes, baseline and the shit. Like, right. Like, do you think it'll ever stop? You know what I'm no, saying? No, no, not no, because the leadership ain't ain't putting out the resources that we need. Yeah. Okay. Two examples. Mm. If you want to change an environment, do you change the people or do you change the idea, the mental the the, the 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 philosophy? The philosophy. Right. Okay, so who holds the philosophies on these communities? Or whoever the township. Got the biggest, biggest voice. Who got the biggest voice? No, no, no. It ain't the voice. It's whoever got the the most resources. The 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 city. The the township. Mm-hmm. It's the it's really the politicians, elected officials, right. that give us the, the the. It's their job to determine what resources need to be allocated for what reason, right? Right. So okay, over the years of misallocated funding, mm-hmm. they giving their buddies this and 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 trying to keep their own power. Mm-hmm. That they didn't empower the people. Yeah. Now. A bad coach will blame the players. You know, you ain't talented enough. Yeah. Okay? A good coach will be like, okay, let me see what kind of talent I got here and let me make the adjustments. Right? Mm-hmm. Jason Kidd got fired. He, you know, he he was a big name. He was he was able to draw some some good players here because of his name. But, yeah. but he wasn't good enough to take them to the next level. Nah. So that when they got rid of Jason Kidd, now we the best team in, in basketball. Right? Right. Okay. The, even though these these uh, these people feel like these Ottomans, these politicians, th- they feel certain like they may like them, right? Yeah. But they ain't good enough to get us to the next level. Right. So we need a new leadership. We need a new philosophy to take us to that next step. And Mike McCarthy, he he won a Super Bowl. Yeah. And soon as he started fucking up, 
They got rid they of them. Why? Because it ain't no room in the real world. Ain't no room for for digression. Mm -hmm. and, and then they even tried to smear his name. Talk about he had massages and stuff on the side. <laughs> you know, they, they tried to throw him all the way under yeah, the bus. You yeah, feel yeah. me? To make yeah. room for the new dude, so everybody won't give him no problems because they liked him. So they had to. It was a strategy. They had to get rid of him. Then they had to pollute him. Right. Like. They know how to do they they yeah. know how to do what they do. You feel yeah. me? He getting back now, he getting back massages doing right, team meetings on, and stuff like that. The monkey smart. But you know that they 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 knew to pollute his name yeah. so they could get their new coach in there and, and everybody give him a clear shot, right? Yeah. So but what we do in our community, we kill we elect the same leadership for 16 years, even though women and kids is getting murdered in the street, even though the schools is going crazy with lead poison. Ain't none of them said nothing about no lead water. All 200 MPS schools full of lead water. Lead is brain damaging. So if your kid went to that school since K-5 all the way to the, and it's a, it go all the way up to the 12th grade, they've been drinking lead the whole time. Oh, that's fucked up. Hey, but so, 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 so basically, what you saying? We, we need a, a new mayor and a new order. We need, we need, we need a whole all new city council. We need a whole new mayor. We just need a new philosophy. Yeah. We we got bad coaches. That's all I'm exactly. saying. And, and nothing personal. It right. ain't nothing personal. Right. But like, like, you are you able to run for the mayor? Or? I could do whatever I want, but they ain't gonna let me last because I'm gonna take all the resources and put yeah. it on the block. See, it. Oh. This city is ran, if you understand ideology, it's ran by Zionistic, mm. European, Jewish, yeah. German philosophy. Mm. And that's those ideas don't benefit blacks. Right. Okay, so prove my point. Look at the statistics. I'm it's nothing I'm saying. This is something, okay, why do we have the worst black community? Where we the majority. When the city of Milwaukee got more black people in it than any other uh, township in the state. The this could be a chocolate city if we really wanted it to be. Resources. But then they going to vote in a coon, see? Yeah. But all right, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, why are we the worst place for black people to live? Because Milwaukee... Remember when Milwaukee used to have um, slits and all of the factories and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. People was coming up from Mississippi to get Milwaukee was good for jobs and yeah. welfare. Yeah. Okay, so we came up here to, to improve our life. Mm -hmm. So once all of the breweries left, once every all of the you know good jobs left, what was left? Mm -hmm. Social work. Mm -hmm. And what do social work need? Broken families. So we the money here. So if you living in Milwaukee and you black, you own a piece of paper somewhere, whether it's 12th and Valide, at the at, down at the, 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 the jails, mm -hmm. you somewhere, CPS, somewhere got your name on it because you the money now. It's yeah. no other real jobs that are going to pay you $22 an hour for you to live here. Right. So you the money here. If you living in Milwaukee, you are part of a social network that needs you to have problems so they can. It's worth a billion dollars of social work. That's all we is, is the commodity. And they need us as the commodity. We the battery. Right. If you look at the disparities in every system, we got the most. It's more black people in CPS. It's more black people in the jails. Mm -hmm. It's more black people on, on these programs mm -hmm. in the Milwaukee because they need us to generate the funding. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah but, you know, it's a couple other leaders, too. Like, But do you think, uh, what do you think about the Black Panthers of Milwaukee? Well, you think well they like do I they said, well, well, I'm going to tell you this. I believe everybody got a right to franchise day. They brand. I don't have no problem with with no what nobody doing. Right. I, I believe you have a right to, if you feel like you could you could start a mentorship program. Mm. That if you feel like you could pull it off. Now you now you don't you don't have a right to make me join your idea. Right. right. Or or just because I'm not doing what you're doing, the shit on what I'm doing. Exactly. Okay. So, but you do have a right to say I can provide this brand and service for my people. Yeah, and, and so I respect anybody that's feel like they they can do it. Mm -hmm. If you can pull it off, yeah. it, it's it's not enough people that's really trying to franchise their brand of service. It's just like the mall strategy. You got all these stores in the mall, mm -hmm. and none of them ain't fighting each other. Why? Because they know if they work together, they get more done, right? Yeah. One day they gonna buy this from you, and then they gonna <laughs> buy this from me, right? Yeah. Okay, but why do when niggas they think that you gotta eat the only cheeseburger? You the, yeah. you, I'm the only restaurant on the motherfucking block. Because they want to be the biggest. Everybody want to be Nino. If, no, it don't matter what you want right. to be. It's what's the reality of it is. Right. I, I'm the most requested advocate in the state, not yeah. just Milwaukee. Yeah. I'm all over the state, yeah, yeah. I, and that's the proof. You can yeah. see it. It's not nothing that you. I have to talk about. I'm all over the state, and I'm in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's more than Milwaukee with me. 
Okay? So, so I don't have no problem because I'm doing my, that was just my brand of service, though. Right. And, and you have a right to expand your brand of service as far as it could go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't get mad because I'm, a, I'm franchising my brand of service and, and you may kept your brand of service to a limited space. Right. Okay, so, that, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. None of it. So if, if I see that the Black Panthers or anybody having a sock drive, and if I want to help, if, it, if it's at from 2 to 4, if I get there at 2 and leave at 4, I help them. Yeah. It's nobody in this city that I haven't helped. Right. It ain't nobody in this city that's doing anything on the front lines that I haven't helped over the years. And I've been out here almost a decade. Right. Yeah, yeah but, uh, you know, the summer around the corner, man, like, like what, what you think we can do as people like to try to keep the murder rate down? Um, go home. <laughs> that's check out. That's check out. Check out. Little check out. When you see drama, go home. For real. It's, it's over. For real. When you see signs that people start arguing and getting upset, yeah. go home. Just go back home. Make it home. But that's where the drama happened at the home. No, no, the drama happened in, in the street. Yeah. It may follow you home. Right. But that's if you engage in it. When I say go home, I mean, like, let's say we out kicking it at a restaurant. Right. All of a sudden, we see some commotion. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. It, look, it's, let's, give me this, let's, let's get out of here. Let's yeah. change directions. Right. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple because if you don't throw no fuel on negativity, it don't grow. Exactly. But what happened is somebody bump into you. Next thing you know, y'all get to looking at each other. Now, ego get in the way. And it could go, it could either... It could go either way after that. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying if somebody bump into you, sorry, brother, my bad. To be the bigger person, mm -hmm. it's good. Or if you got drama with somebody, look, it ain't worth it. If I did anything to you, I'm sorry, whatever. Right. We good. Pol it, I'll, even if I didn't do nothing wrong, I always ask a brother, what did I do to you? And he get to stuttering because I don't do nothing to people. I don't practice messing with people. So when I ask a brother, I already know I didn't do nothing to them. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm going to I'm apologize because I want him to know that it's okay. Like, we don't have to be, we don't have Into to take it. it there. We don't have to. Right. Nipsey Hussle was a prime example. He, You know, he, we got bigger things to work on. For real. I, I even go as far as if you got drama with a black person, you lose it. Because we don't got nothing. So that energy could have been put in somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I remember when I was younger, man, like, <clears throat> one thing I think is the community like is like programs, because when I was little, the Hang Tough program was out. I there. was just talking about that. And you know what I'm saying? The Hang Tough program. They had That's the, one of the best programs. Man, that's what I used to love going, like, I remember uh, we used to go. But you like, liked the, the song, though. The song, you liked the, 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 the whole, the whole motion about it. Everything. But that's back when they was giving real grant monies to, to, yep. to really solve stuff. Yeah. Cause I was a vi I was a um a product of the pick program yeah. for Matter. Oh, for real? I, I was a Matter baby. I was one of the original Matter babies. I was um when Matter Channel 14 was having uh the kids come. I was original Matter baby. They was giving me checks. My checks was like five six hundred. I was old. I was a high, I was like I and when I was a freshman, I had my own TV show and everything. <laughs> in high school, that's why I said my life changed when I got to high school. You know what I mean? So, but that's back when they was really giving money to the right people to to put it to in the streets. Like now it's just. I, think I, I got enough money to help 100. I'm only going to help 10, and I'm going to show five on the news and make it look like I help 100. That's, that's, fucked up. that's how that work now. That's sad, man. <laughs> hey, but low-key, dog, like, I think that the hang tough shit will work in this generation. You know what I think will work in this generation? We we This generation has been um, dramatized. Dra I call it drama and trauma. Dramatized. Yeah. They, 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 everything is drama. If you watch our programming... It was stuff on TV now that wasn't on TV when we was coming up.